Boop. Happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. Um, and uh, thought today I would talk about um, Jonah. That's the text, the Old Testament text for today. The full list of texts are Psalm 114, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 17, and then 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 28. Um, and I've titled this, Have It Your Way. So, you know, we live in a world where everybody wants to have it their way, right? You know, uh, everybody, it's all about, you know, I've got the freedom to do this. I've got the freedom to do that. It's its all about my personal liberty, and I'm going to have it my way. Uh, what was it, the uh, was it a Burger King commercial, I think? I'm really, that that just shows how old I am because I don't think Burger Kings run that commercial in decades. Like the Smithsonian has a copy of it stored away somewhere. So like all you college students watching it have no idea what I'm talking about right now, and this is just becoming painfully awkward. But hey, I'm gonna have it my way right now, and I'm gonna talk about Burger King. Um, but anyway, and it was probably not even that. It was probably McDonald's, but I'm pretty sure it's Burger King. Anyway have it your way. We all, you know, everybody wants to have it their own way. They they want to have it their own way and and they say, you know, who's it going to hurt? Who's it going to hurt if I just have it my way? Uh well, uh, the reality is it could, you know, can actually hurt a lot of people uh depending on what your actions are. Um uh, that's that's the story that we that we hear we have here in Jonah. Jonah's unique to me cuz it's it's in the the collection that we call the Minor Prophets, um, which I'm hopefully going to be doing a series on. Uh, it's taken me a while to get everything kind of under control, so I'm hoping I'm going to get to do a, a video series on that. Uh, but Jonah's kind of stands out to me among the 12 Minor Prophets because um, it's almost completely, well, it is. It's it's really a story. It's, it's one of the reasons why it's a perennial favorite for like Sunday school and uh, vacation Bible school and things like that. You know, the Veggie Tales riffed on it. Uh, you know, the, I should have gotten like a little playset of the pirates who don't do anything to put on my shelf there. Um, I didn't even think about that. I don't even know if my sons still have any Veggie Tales stuff. Anyway, but Jonah is this story about a private, uh, a private, well, he acted like a private and like dumb private in the military, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, he was a prophet that uh, decided that he was just going to have it his way. And and I guess he figured, you know, who's it really going to hurt? And that's where the story picks up here in chapter 1. Um, because what happens is that uh, we get the long story here of Jonah's sin. And, and it really was sin. He, he, because he literally heads the opposite direction. And that's that's really what sin is. You, you know, it's not really something that, you know, you know, you just accidentally stumble into. You can, I guess, out of ignorance, go against the will of God, but generally sinfulness, the way theology talks about it and the Bible talks about it, it's willful disobedience. It's knowing what you're supposed to do, uh, knowing even the whys behind it, even, and then just intentionally doing the opposite, going against what you've been told to do. And so here at the beginning of chapter one, it, we're told very clearly that God spoke to this Jonah son of Amittai and told him, go at once to Nineveh. And it wasn't like, you know, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you went to Nineveh or would you like to go to Nineveh? No, it was get off your rear end and go to Nineveh and uh, tell them uh, that I really think they're wicked. I'm not really happy with their shenanigans and I'm putting it nicely. But anyway, he says, cry out against it. So, you know, here's what Jonah does. Instead of getting up and going to Nineveh, which was off to the east. Now, Nineveh is, in the biblical world, was one of the great cities of uh, what you hear talked about as the Assyrian Empire. And a lot of times, biblical writers just use Nineveh as shorthand for Assyria. Or not for Assyria, but yeah, Assyria. And um, so they always identified it with, like, the heart and the pulse of this empire who was their enemy. And um, it was to the east of them. But so what does he do? He goes down to Joppa on the coast, right? He heads down to Joppa and he starts looking for ships and he finds one that's heading out to Tarshish. Now, I don't know that anybody really knows exactly where Tarshish was. It gets mentioned a lot in the Old Testament and um, it's always kind of an, uh, 
kind of like a, an exotic place. There's a lot of really cool things that are shipped in from there. Lots of, um, you know, precious metals and jewels and things. I think uh, it's one of the places that uh, King Solomon traded with and got all his fancy fancies from. Um, but anyway, it's the only thing we can really say is that basically it's kind of code for as far away from Israel as you could possibly get. It was off to the west somewhere. I've even heard people say that it could have been out like, you know, the Pillars of Hercules, which was ancient code word for the Straits of Gibraltar. So we don't know exactly where it was. All we know is really far away. So Jonah is trying to get as far away from where he's supposed to be as he possibly can. And we're also told he was trying to get away from the presence of the Lord, which is really unique and interesting that a prophet of the Lord would think that. Total noob. Um, anyway, so we're told he goes down to Joppa on the coast, boards a ship to Tarshish, and, you know, but it, he just is trying to get as far away from Nineveh and as far away from the presence of God as he could be. Uh, and, and next, you know, next thing we know, there's this great, horrible wind that blows up from the west uh, that God calls up and basically the image picture it that the, the ship is sailing away from Joppa off to the west towards the setting sun and the wind comes up out of the west and is trying to push the ship back to port um, and here we get Jonah the you know that he's it's the situation of sleeper awake he is totally asleep in his sin he has gone to bed with no guilty conscience whatsoever um, and is asleep in the hold of this ship. And meanwhile, the sailors on board have no idea what's going on. They have no idea who he is, where he's supposed to be, or why he's on their ship, other than he's a passenger. And they're having to deal with all the fallout from Jonah's willful disobedience. Uh, so who's it going to hurt? Well, apparently, there's a really good chance it's going to hurt all the sailors on this ship. So Jonah's... Like I said, he's asleep with no guilty conscience whatsoever, apparently, about this. Um, and he is not concerned, apparently, about what he has done to God or what he has done to the other people around him, especially the people on the ship. And uh, he's just not even concerned. And so that's, you know, that's the interesting thing when we say, you know, I want to have it my way. Who's it really going to hurt if I have it my way? Well, there's like... There are always unintended consequences with our actions, with our own exercise of our free will and our freedoms. And, you know, our personal sins, uh, as personal as you think they may be, um, often have an unint unintended consequences for others. So here we end up, the only way that this story can end up here for Jonah now from this point on is the, that he's going to be thrown overboard. So man overboard, right? Um, the sailors don't know what's going on. They wake him up. They're like, how can you, how can you sleep through this? You know, why are you sound asleep when the rest of us are fighting for our lives? That should sound familiar if you've ever read the gospels. And, um, they say, get up and call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us, uh, uh spare us a thought so we don't perish. He's, you know, he's like, you know, this is apparent, this might be between you and your God, and he does, he's not really our God, but who knows, maybe he might, you know, just kind of consider us enough that he'll spare us. Uh, so they still don't know what's going on. They, they, all they know is that there's, this is unusual, right? These are seasoned sailors. They know what's going on. They've never encountered this before. Um, you know, in Tarshish, like I said, it was apparently a big trading city, so they were probably going back and forth before. It wasn't their first rodeo. Um, so all they know is there's something unusual. So they do something that was really big in the Old Testament. They cast lots to determine who was guilty. Now, that's kind of like, uh, if you've ever seen movies or where people talk about drawing straws or drawing the short straws, it's kind of the idea of letting random chance, um, create a space where, you know, like, God can point directions or the fates or how you know all the multiple ways they considered things in the ancient near east um but so they cast lots and the lot falls on jonah and so suddenly he is the recipient of all their attention and they're like what did you do and so he has to fess up and he tells them you know he's like well i'm a hebrew and uh i worship the lord the god of heaven and they're like uh-huh uh-huh and they and you know because you know the one who made 
the sea and dry land. And that's the thing, the crazy thing. He confesses, or maybe he just now realizes that, hell, he is also the, he's the God of heaven, but he's also the God of sea and dry land. So, um, you know, he, he even realizes that and was still trying to take a ship away from the presence of God. Uh, but I guess that's how you think when you're so dedicated to having things your way or having it your way and you really aren't concerned about who it's really going to hurt. I guess you kind of justify all kinds of things that way and, and you know, don't think rationally about what might happen or what the worst case scenario is. So anyway, he ends up, long story short, telling these sailors that the only way out of this is that they're going to just have to throw him overboard because this god he worships, the god who he has sinned against, who ha you know, who has been completely disobedient to, uh, is after him, and the only way they're going to get out of it is if they throw him overboard. Well, the sailors, I think they understand that, and they're like, yeah, but we don't want to be guilty for your death, which is really interesting, because they're more concerned for their responsibility towards Jonah than Jonah was ever con seems to be a concerned about his responsibility towards them. And they go from talking about the god of Jonah, the, you know, the, as in he's one of many, and God, little g, um, to begging forgiveness from the Lord. Um, and so they do what Jonah says. They throw him overboard. Um, and then, you know, it's interesting. They've gone from, like I said, you know, just kind of being interested in the God of Jonah to fearing the Lord even more, offering him a sacrifice, and making vows to him. So, you know, have it your way. This is like a worst case scenario of what happens when you just are dead set on having it your way. Tomorrow, though, you know, this is the thing. This is not the end of Jonah. Um, he gets thrown overboard, and the last thing we're told is that it says, But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So it's not the end of Jonah. Tomorrow we're going to find out what happens. So anyway, have a good rest of your Tuesday and a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Boop.